Hello everyone, welcome back once again to the joy of Japanese business, Japan Business Time with Rochelle Karp. And uh, another exciting episode today. Actually, we've got a topic that, Rochelle, you're a real expert on to begin with. Mm -hmm. The subject is from KNS TV. Uh, so thank you very much for the subject request. And the question is, we've got a bunch of topics uh, requests around this. What do we see as being the future for the Japanese labor market, which is going through some huge changes right now? It is, yes. And it's hard to know what's going to happen. It is hard to know, but, but Rochelle's going to tell us, okay. so you're going to know after this. Okay, well, we'll, we'll yes, we'll do that. <laughs> okay, hang around, you won't want to miss this. Of the dramatic changes, many changes that are going through the Japanese economy at the moment, um, maybe nothing bigger in terms of impact on society, uh, as big as the aging society uh, or, or bigger, is the change to the whole fundamental changes that have been happening probably since Koizumi, probably since about 2002, mm -hmm, right. to the whole employment framework in Japan. Right, exactly. So maybe we should start out and talk about what it was traditionally. Yeah. Well, okay, traditionally Japan had the Shushin Koyo Seido, which is the lifetime employment system, or custom, so to speak, where mm -hmm. The majority of people worked for the same company for their entire career. Mm. And so this led to a lot of stability and you didn't have people running around and switching jobs. You didn't have companies laying people off yeah. and everything was very kind of picture perfect and nice or people would like to believe it was anyways. So that was the traditional setup. And this was based on particularly post-war. You have to understand labor unions in Japan and socialism. I mean, socialism in Japan was very strong. Yes. And Japan very nearly, under MacArthur, very nearly democratically became communist at one point. Uh, and it was around that time. And, and MacArthur, for being this kind of famous hard-nosed American military general, was incredibly liberal with, with a lot of the reforms that he put in under, mm -hmm. under the GHQ administration, which included these very strong employment um, protections, mm -hmm. which like the, like the pacifist constitution and all these other real hippie... Uh, you know, lovey-dovey uh, things that got put in got absolutely cemented um, into the fabric of the society mm -hmm. and have had this really deep impact. So these things really have been the same since the 50s. Yes, exactly. Um, and, and served the country pretty well during the high growth period because yeah. companies had stable group of employees, they could invest in them, people could feel that sense of belongingness to a company and so it kind of played on deep you know, mm. themes in Japanese society, and mm. everyone kind of liked it. And the thing is, things are now changing, and we'll talk about that. Yeah. But I think a lot of people still see that was the ideal and want it to still be that way. And I'll just say one other interesting thing was there was a survey by um, NHK, I remember reading about three or four years ago, at a time when there were some activists like shareholder, uh, foreign shareholder funds that were being very activist with some Japanese companies trying to get them to change. And the NHK did a survey, who owns a company? And of course it's the shareholders, number one. Right. Uh, but they kind of, I think the choices were the, the, the shareholders, the, the company executives, or the employees. And the overwhelming majority of normal LDP voting, uh, conservative, hardworking, you know, Japanese, the vast majority in this NHK survey assumed that the employees own the company. Wow. They missed Economics 101, I guess. Well, they did, but, but you have to understand. <laughs> but, that's this the, is but that's the mindset, right? So deeply ingrained. Um, yes. That's what you have to understand. And that's right. why the employees work with everybody um, and, and why people are so hostile to these activist shareholder funds that were coming in. Right, right, exactly. So so let's talk about the changes. Well, okay. w w so it's pretty much since Koizumi came in. What were the problems that they wanted to address, okay. and and what are the changes that are, that yeah. are happening now? Well, the big the big downside of having this stable group of employees is that they become a big fixed cost, yeah. and you can't let them go. And then things change, and you don't need this group of people. What are you going to do with them? And yeah. you get crazy things like the steel company mm. that doesn't need to make as much steel in Japan anymore. What is it going to do with all the people who make the steel? It opens an amusement park, and they go work at the amusement park. Right. I mean, really, that literally happened. So that's the, it, you know, that the, sounds great. <laughs> yeah, for the steel workers, maybe it was a good deal. But you know, the idea is that the companies would have to sort of you know yeah. turn themselves inside out to yeah. find ways to utilize the employees they have. But as 
the global economy that the winds of change blew into Japan as mm. you know tariff barriers fell and, and more economic integration with the rest of the world, it's becoming harder for Japanese companies to mm. maintain these large fixed costs. It's yeah. so inflexible. And maybe a point on the timing. The bubble basically ended, I think it's fair to say about 1994, or that's when it was right. that's when the the burst started. And in that time all these Japanese companies were constantly heading towards bankruptcy and desperately trying to turn around and failing. Right. It wasn't until after Koizumi came in 2002. So you're talking eight years of Japan's biggest companies, you know, and some of the banks actually collapsing, and and, and some of these, and this real fear that there'd be mass social disruption, that right. these companies would sink under the weight of their of their business costs. Right. So it sounds, I, I appreciate it. it sounds horrible, um, you know, and it sounds nice trying to save the employees, and it sounds horrible that they have to get rid of these costs, and you don't call them people, right. but the, you're literally going to lose everybody. If you, you know, if you don't do something, if yeah. you couldn't be more flexible with the employees, you couldn't save the you know you could save the, the company uh, rather than lose everybody. If you could be more flexible with the labor pool, and there was no ability to be flexible, and this is what Japanese companies started lobbying the government that they wanted the ability to be more flexible, right? Even just for a little bit, just on a little temporary basis, right? Exactly. And that's how it started. Right. And so, what are the changes that have been happening? Well, I mean, I think you know. It's still really difficult to let employees go, but it's a little bit easier than it was. Yeah. And then also, companies are allowed to hire people who are not these permanent employees. Yeah. And so you've seen this huge increase in people who are contingent workers Yes. on various types of contracts. And companies can hire and fire those people much more easily, mm. and also they don't pay them as much, and they don't give them as much benefits. Yeah. Which is really great for the companies, mm. but the problem is it's really not so great for those employees. And it, it has some social as, you know, impacts as well. Really that, big social through. impacts, because those people tend to not get the same training as the permanent employees. They don't get established in a career. They don't make as much money. Mm. And then a lot of them don't get married, and they don't have children. Yeah. It's, and so long term, it's actually really not good for Japanese society. Mm. So at least in my opinion, mm. that probably wasn't a really good way to address this. Because what they were trying to do is let's preserve the traditional system, but then like have some people who are outside it. Yeah. But then you get this two-tier thing well, that, that just, it. just really destroys people's motivation. And it's um, not using well those people who are in, in the contingent group. And what's really started to happen as well, this system was, was sold to the public by the government as this is just going to be for a small, like no more than 10% of the workforce and for, you know, for, for allowing a bit of fluidity, a bit of uh, flexibility. And it's got way out of hand. And yeah. it's already at 45% of new employees. Right. And it's not that there they're still is impossible to fire the lifetime employees or it's pretty, it's very, very difficult to do so. Um, but because of, in a way, again, it's, it's, like, it's like the same problem in Europe. It's because of these, you, you know, protected employees um, they that you have they other are. ones who don't get a good deal. Yeah, it is very much like what you get in Europe, actually. Yeah. It's a similar problem. It's, it's the new hires get the, get, get the bum end of that, where a lot of companies are not even hiring you know, full employees anymore. They're hiring everyone in these contracts. Right. And it is creating this generation of young people who... Well, it's got two really interesting impacts. The first is the one that you said, that people don't have the... They don't feel they have the economic security to make the lifetime steps that society right. relies upon. Right. Um, the other is that they are not as anywhere near as committed to the companies that they're joining. Um, right. you are, you, joining a company in the old days was marrying that company. Your right. whole family, you're expected to marry in the company. You're yeah, expected to, yeah, exactly. Now, you know, you, why would you, for a company that's not giving you any sort of protection or anything, anything mm -hmm. like that, why would, what would why stop would you? Why would you care? You don't have, and, and actually one of the big things that I write about a lot is low engagement in Japanese firms. Yeah. Well, you know, you're not going to be engaged mm. when you feel like you're being treated by dirt. Yeah. But like dirt, right? Well, but there's an interesting turning point that's also happening with this now, which mm -hmm. is that um, I've read something how a lot of these contracted workers actually feel, and I've seen blogs and so on being written about this in Japanese now, they actually feel that they're in the better position. Interesting. And this is a, this is kind of a turnaround, uh, but it's because they have this flexible, and well, one, because they're cheaper than the regular employees, they're actually safer and they're less likely to come under pressure. <laughs> right. Because the company wants to expand the number of right, them. Right, yeah. Um, and, you know, having this sort of freedom, which people didn't think they had before, um, it is making, it is having this this effect of having making the labor market more fluid, which was the overall goal. And the thing is, there are people in government now who are saying, now out loud, which I'm sure they were thinking back in 2002, but now uh -huh. they're starting to say out loud, hey, maybe it should be 100%. Right, right. Well, and that's the thing, and that, that and, and that's what I'm thinking, that there's, mm. you should probably just throw out the old system mm. and put in some system where 
everyone has some sort of flexibility. Yeah. That would maybe be a little bit more like the U.S. employment at will. Yeah. But the thing is, is I, I wrote an article where I talked about that on the Japanese Huffington Post. Yeah. You would not believe I think I people saw. who went crazy. <laughs> I, yeah, like because that's is, a sacred cow. Like people, everyone aspires to be that say shine, yeah. the permanent employee. Don't take that dream away from us. It's really it, people are very emotionally committed to that. Well, that's a sacred zone. That's Article Nine of the Constitution. It's, right. it's guns in America, frankly. It's you know you don't <laughs> mess with lifetime employment. It is uh, kind of like that, but the problem is it's going to strangle the economy. But the, the, the system right now is so. Companies are just so distorted mm. around the labor laws that they have mm. that it's just the distortions are, 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 are tying the economy in knots, basically. Yeah, and the, whole, the fact as well that the, the system it relies upon uh, renewal, it relies on hiring new employees with people going out at 65 and that there is this kind of travel later as well. And the problem is now you have these companies, well, one, the pension system is... is, is not going to last. No, right. Nobody thinks it's going to last. Right. You can't have everyone still quitting at 60. At 65 yeah. and living to be 90 and right. being healthy through through all of that. Again, right. and, and also, why not utilize all that brain power? Yeah. It's and, wasted. And all these people right. want to work. They end up in you know supermarket car parks. And I stuff know, like it's that. such a waste. Uh, and these are people who can be working. And this is where maybe having a more flexible employment system means that those people could go and, you know, that. Well, you know, if, if, people, if people's positions and what they were paid. Yeah were based on what they could actually contribute right. rather what than what abstract category they're in. Right. And actually, the Abe government is trying to do something. It's um, it's called, they're calling it equal pay for equal work, which yeah. is a little bit different than the U.S. version of that. Yeah. But the idea is that your pay would be based on what you're actually doing, not on your category. Yeah. And I think that that's a good step. It's Ups a tricky one. Side. It is a tricky one because, of course, people view that with suspicion. At the same time, they see this is a way just to lower everyone's pay. Well, well, that's the problem is that, that everyone is very... Anything that the government tries to do to change the employment system, people view as, well, they're just doing it to hurt us. Yeah. And also people's trust in companies and their HR departments is really low. And in fact, in global, there's been global really surveys, amazing. Japan is the absolute lowest. And this yeah. is something that surprised me. When I, even when I came to Japan, even in the 90s, People's attachment and loyalty to companies. I would be in my homestay family, which was a Konica family. Uh, they worked in Konica. And one day there, there were some, because Hachioji is all Konica, um, they can't sell Fujifilm video cassette. I remember I, they were on sale. And I was like, well, I don't care. Jeez, it's cheap. I'm going to buy some Fujifilm stuff. And I brought it home. And man, I, I got some. I did. I think I had to throw them. I wasn't allowed to show them in the living room. I, I got, I got oh, some wow. real. Wow, interesting. So people used to be so loyal. And I, I, I assumed. I was taken aback by seeing how disconnected Japanese have become on, on loyalty to their own companies. Right, right. And, 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 and that goes on to all sorts of other problems of Japan's productivity is very low, PEU and end. Yeah. All the things that I actually write about, <laughs> we we're not going to get into it now, but it's it's a huge issue, right? It is, yeah. it is. So, and so we should probably wrap this one up, We should up, wrap actually. this one up. Um, but the, so the future is no question it's going to need to keep changing. I think it's, the market's going to need to change partly to allow more flexibility and partly to keep to, the whole aim is to make more people productive to let women right. work to let elderly people work and but, to be able to have people work in different ways yeah. rather than everyone has to be exactly the same yeah right um, but who knows where it's going to go it, right. it, it, it's, it's hard to say but you, what's certain is you're going to see more changes and it's a fascinating right. and, area, and it's, it's going to continue to be a, a, a hot topic definitely yeah. Uh, and Rochelle's one of the best people to follow for that. So, uh, yes, uh, that's a great topic, actually. And you can tell we could do a whole series just on right, that. Right, yeah. Uh, but we have more for this series. So uh, come and join us again, same time next week. Yes, exactly. And uh, see you soon. Peace.